welcome back now we have discussed what are determinate structures and we've discussed what are indeterminate structures the indeterminate structures to determine whether a structure is indeterminate it is when the number of unknown forces unknown forces on your structure is greater than the equilibrium equilibrium equations that we can use to calculate those unknown forces so if you know if you have four unknowns you need four equations and most are uh, for a member that has one part will ha only have three equations so if you have four and three equations then your structure is indeterminate we denote the number of forces using r and we say that if it is greater than the number of equations a number of equation is given by 3n if it is greater than the number of equations then your structure is statically indeterminate now r will be the number of unknown forces while 3n will give you number of number of equation now our n here will be the number of parts that your structure has now if you see the structure that is already drawn here it only has one part so i will substitute i will substitute one in here and three times one is equal to three therefore you have num one uh, three equations of equilibrium yeah now another important thing that we're going to use here is if you take that number of unknown forces you subtract the number of equations it gives you the degree of indeterminates so if you take number of forces let's say you have four unknown forces but you have three uh, equilibrium equations four minus three will be one so you have one degree of determinants which means that you are missing one extra equations to find all your unknowns now to make up for that one equations we are going to use the compatibility equations now let's see how the force method work the way that the force method works is say let's say you have a member here and there's a force of it of 160 kilonewtons acting at point b now the first thing that you want to do is draw the free body diagram of your member so that we can see all the unknown forces acting on our member we know that at c since it is on top of a roller we will only have vertical support so we'll have cy there now we still have our force acting in at 160 kilo newtons now at point a we have a fixed support so at a fixed support you will have a vertical support a y you will have a horizontal support a x and you will also have a moment moment at a now that we have our unknown forces is our structure determinate you can see that we have we have four unknown unknowns in our member cy ay ax and our moment one two three four but the number of equations will be equal to three therefore four minus three it is indeterminate to the first degree we, if we have four forces and we have three equations you can see that our r minus three will be equal to one therefore there is one additional one additional equation necessary for static stability we need to find one extra equation so now i'm going to remove one of the forces that are acting on my member one of the reactive forces on my member and consider that one as the redundant redundant now i only take one because my structure is 
statically indeterminate to the first degree if it was statically indeterminate to the second degree i would have two redundants if we take cy what structure will we have remember that once we take off the redundant we want to be left with a structure that is determinate meaning that it is left with the, a number of forces that can be solved using the three equations of equilibria if we take cy we are left with ax ay and our moment at our moment at a we still have a force of 160 kilonewtons that is acting at b you may notice that now that we do not have cy here our redundant if we remove the effect of our redundant our structure is no longer vertically supported at c that will change how the structure will be formed now if you look at the original structure how was it going to deform now it was going to deform something like like this now this 160 force was going to push it down but then here at the supports at the fixed there will be no displacement at c there will be no displacement because of cy if we remove the effect of cy how will it now deform we still have no angle but then because of 160 our structure will now deform going downwards like that because we do not have c to hold support c in place because of that there will be a displacement this displacement at c we are going to call it delta c there's no cy to keep this support in place we do not want our structure to be deforming like this so we are going to introduce the effect of our redundant back but we're going to do that slowly so we'll still have our ay our ax and we'll have our moment at at a once we remove the effect of our redundant the new structure that we have here is called the primary the primary structure now this primary structure is a structure without our redundance it is a determinate because now we have three unknowns and three equations so let's introduce an effect of a force at c so that it moves this point tries to move it back in place so to see how our member would react if we introduce back our redundance but slowly at c we are going to do that by using a unit force that we know the value of a force of value one in this case we only look at the effect of that one unit load nothing else on our structure so we won't include the 160 force acting on our structure and then we will now see how our structure will deform now because of this load our structure will not deform downwards this time but it will begin to deform upwards because of that unit load now we now have a displacement here f c c f c c is what we call the linear flexibility coefficient now it is linear because if we look at our default linear elastic deformation it is linear if you put a force here if you increase that force the deformation will also increase in a linear mat fcc our linear flexibility coefficient is deflection per unit per unit force now if we keep putting a load here and we increase that load the deformation would increase um in a linear Met. so it is directly proportional to the deformation let's see if we can write down the compatibility equation now what you may notice is that what we want 
is that the deformation here at C must be equal to zero. So this deformation delta C and this deformation FCC must net give us zero. We do not want a deformation here at C. What we would say is that, that this delta C taking that up is positive. Delta C is going down. So our delta C will be negative. Now, because the deformation at the unit load goes up, it will be positive. And let's say that deformation is denoted by delta subscript C, C. Now, again, it is the deformation at C because of the unit load at C. Now, we say that those deforma two deformations must give us zero. So they must cancel each other out. Now we have negative delta C plus delta CC here. We found out that it is given by FCCCY. So we are going to substitute that here and have CCY. Now this is our compatibility equation. Once you have the compatibility equation, then you can solve for your redundant at C. What is my delta C? Now, the delta C, you can use virtual work. You can use the beam deformation formulas to find delta C. If you take your beam deflection equations, you can see that if you have a beam and you have a force in the middle, you can use 5PL cubed over 48 ei to find and then you substitute and then it gives you that your delta c is given by 6250 over 3 ei now your f c c now if you look at the effect of the unit load you will notice that we have a beam and then we have a force acting at the end of the beam so my fcc will be given by pl squared over 2 ei now when i substitute my p is 1 because i have a unit force acting on my beam it, it it's a cantilever beam right now from what it was before now i take l2 is 5 squared over 2 e I. Now that will give me 25 over 2 E I. And now that I have delta C and I have F C C, I can calculate C Y. So I will have negative 6250 over 3 E I plus my F C C. My flexibility coefficient is equal to 25 over 2 EI into my redundancy Y. CY will give you 50 newtons. And because they are positive, then you know that it is acting upwards because we say that up is positive. So it will be 50 newtons acting upwards. Therefore, my CY here is equal to 50 kilo newtons now to find the other unknowns in my my other unknown forces i can use the equilibrium equations now to find a x the sum of x if we take right as positive is equal to zero now a x is the only force acting in the x exists therefore a x is equal to zero if i take the moment about a and i take anti-clockwise as positive the sum of moments about a must be equal to zero so the first moment i will have is m a and since here i took it as anti-clockwise it will be positive now what other forces are acting on the b the 160 about a 160 causes a rotation so it will be negative now i'll have 160 and it's acting 2.5 meters away from a so it's 2.5 now is there another moment yes because of c 
Now, since C is acting upwards, about A, it causes rotation that is anti-clockwise. So, it will be positive. And now, CY, we know that it is 50. It's acting 2 plus 5 plus. It act, it's acting away the entire length, which is 5. Now, they must all be equal to 0. And then, I solve for my moment at A, it will be equal to 1. 50 kilo newtons meters now because it is positive it is acting in that direction because i took anti-clockwise as positive so now to find a y we take the sum of forces in the y direction which must be equal to zero now which forces are those the first one is a y acting upwards we have 160 acting downwards and we have cy which is equal to 50 acting upwards so it is positive equal to zero therefore our ai is equal to 110 kilo newtons because it is positive it is acting upwards so ay acts in that direction and it's equal to 110 kilo newtons